guys, Scotty from Moore here. Uh, welcome to the first video in a series where we're going to take a closer look at the Preamp Live. Um, each of these videos will be like a small tutorial and a walkthrough about how we can use it, how you control it, what the features are, etc. etc. Uh, in this video, we're just going to look at a basic setup and we're going to have a look at the basic controls, how to navigate through the pedal. Um, first of all, let's talk about the setup. So, uh, my crazy green Ibanez is going direct into the main input of Preamp Live here. And then the main output, which is here, is going to my backline. In this case, my backline is a Moore Tube Engine 20, which is a 20 watt EL84 based power amp. And that is connected to a GC112 closed back 112 cabinet, which is loaded with a Celestium V30. We're micing that up today with a Sennheiser E906 just off center and an SM57 right on the edge of the speaker. And when we look back at the uh, preamp live here, we have our XLR output, which is connected direct to my audio interface. And we're going to be recording the mics and the direct um, output at the same time. I'm just going to bypass uh, preamp live for a second. Here's the sound into the amp without uh, any preamp at all. So I'm just going to put the preamp in now um, on the first channel. Okay, we've gone over the setup. Let's have a look at the top panel on Preamp Live. The first thing that we're going to come to is the foot switches. Uh, so in Preamp Live, when you buy it, it's going to come preloaded with 12 different preamp channels. Actually, you can select uh, any preamp channels that you want from a choice of 50 that are available in the software. Uh, that includes most of our micro preamp pedals and also some new ones, which we haven't released before. We will also be releasing new preamp models uh, into the future. So there'll always be something new to get for this pedal. Um, so as I said, it comes preloaded with 12 from the factory. Um, and these are broken down into three banks with four channels in each bank. So we kind of designed the control layout and the foot switches to be familiar to guys who used to use four channel amps, things like that. So the control is really simple. You've got channel one, channel two, channel three, and channel four. On a traditional amp setup, that might be like clean, overdrive, crunch, high gain, something like this. But you can set up your preamps however you like. Um, and so this would be one bank. Uh, as you see, you've got A, B, and C here. They're your three banks. We're currently in bank A. You'll notice all of the lights at the top are red. That indicates bank A. If we press these two, bank B, you see all the lights at the top turn green. Green indicates bank B. Uh, you'll also notice this is flashing. The sound in preamp live does not change till you select the channel. Like this. Um, and so obviously this is C, so we press these two, bank C, that'll be indicated by yellow lights at the top. Um, so three banks with four channels in each. 12 preamps that you can instantly just whap out the drawer. Um, the, another foot switch control, which is very important. If you change some settings in your channel and you want to store them settings, uh, all you'd have to do is you would just press and hold the foot switch for the channel that is currently activated. It'll flash and that's it. Settings are saved. Let me just move that treble a second. There we go. Easily peasily. Okay, so let's have a look at the next row of controls. Uh, the next row of controls is our global controls. The first global control we come to is master. This is the master volume for the total volume output um, of, the, of the device itself. So this will control the volume from your main output. Uh, very simple. <laughs> Uh, 
that won't affect the individual volume of each channel, it just affects the overall output of the device. Uh, the next control here is your presence. Master presence is really important with a device like this and it's very useful. If you've got preamp live and you spent ages tweaking in your preamps just how you like them, you taking this to do shows at different venues, you're probably going to be plugging into some different back lines um, or even maybe some very different preamps on the front line. So uh, the presence allows you to compensate for how bright or how dark those different back lines and different PAs are. Um, so to illustrate, I'll just put this clean one on here. Really bright at the top, a lot darker at the bottom. Um, you'll find even sometimes if you're using different instruments, this master presence uh, might be very useful too. Uh, next one we've got here is effects loop. So something I didn't mention at the start of the video in the setup is we also have over this side uh, of the preamp live, we have an ocean machine and that's connected to the effects loop of preamp live. Now the effects of the preamp live actually has two different modes. We're only going to talk about the standard mode in this video. Um, we will talk about other things you can do with the effects loop in a later video. But standard mode, uh, the effects loop is a normal serial effects loop. And you've got a control here so that you can adjust the level, the send level. And this makes it very useful for using with different kinds of gear. Sometimes when you get a vintage pedal, uh, the preamps in it are very different to a modern pedal. Uh, the impedance settings might be different, so you can use this to compensate or get it tweaked in just right. Now you'll also notice there's a little LED hole here. At the minute there's no LED on, that means there's no effects loop on. So the effects loop's not open. So here's my sound. If I open the effects loop uh, by pressing 2 and 4, ah, now you see the lights on. The fact that it's green means it's in your, in your normal mode. We'll, like I said, we'll go into that in more depth in a different video, but on, if the light's on, the effects loop's on. If the light's off, the effects loop's off, right? So now I've got that turned on. Oh, you can hear we've got a bit of reverb, a bit of delay from the ocean machine there. Again, if I turn that off, very dry. The effects loop is also programmable. So if you want to save this channel with the effects loop open, after you've got it open, just pull down the foot switch for a second. Okay, we've got channel two, you see the effects loop is off, we've got a channel one, ah, the effects loop is open. So you can say whether the effects loop is on or off for each channel. The last control that we'll get to on the global controls is right here. This is an easy access uh, pair of toggle switches to switch on and off cabinet simulation for the different outputs. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, our main jack output here is going to our backline. The backline in this case is a tube amp and a guitar speaker. Because we have a real guitar speaker there, we don't need the cabinet simulation switched on. So for this output, we have this set off. The XLR that's going direct to the sound card, unfortunately, this is not going through a guitar speaker. So very important that we have some speaker simulation switched on for this. So here you can see our toggle switch has speaker simulation switched on. In a later video, we're going to look in depth at uh, what you can really do with the speaker simulators um, and how to load IR files into the preamp live um, because it does have a full-fledged IR loader inside. But just for quick reference, I'll put on a high gain channel here. Um, I'm going to switch off the cabinet simulation on the XLR route. I'm going to deactivate the speakers. So here's the direct output with the cabinet simulation switched off. So 
not very pleasant. So here's the same thing, but with the speaker simulation switched on. <laughs> A lot better, I think. So moving on, uh, last but not least, at the top of the pedal, you can see here, surrounded by lots of little lights, we have our channel controls. Now, each of these controls, um, when you save your channel, each of these will be saved. When you recall a channel, each of these will be different, will be recalled. So you see we've got these lights. These serve two purposes. As you saw earlier, when you select a different bank, the colour will indicate which bank you're on. And when you uh, adjust a setting, the lights will follow it like this. So this gives you a really fast and easy to see visual reference when you're live on stage, even if it's dark. Um, as you see, it's very, very fast and very intuitive to change the controls on here, just like it would be with a traditional amplifier. Uh, controls are, you've got your channel volume, uh, you've got a three band EQ, and then you've got a gain control here, and then at the end, we've got a new feature just for preamp live, which is a very cool booster. And the booster can be set pre or it can be set the post. If it's pre, it means it comes before your preamp. Um, in which case, when you use a booster, it will push the front end of the preamp and give it a little bit more drive. If it's post, it means it's after the preamp, which means it'll just give it uh, an audible volume boost. Very clean, but louder. Um, I'm going to illustrate that for you if you like here. So if I put on, let's stick on, I'll tell you what, on channel B here, we've got a very cool, one of my favourite preamps here. If I put on a pre-booster now, I'll just put that in the middle there. So that's quite a lot of boost. That's coming before the preamp. Uh, if I switch that on by pressing the channel foot switch, this turns red, that turns red. So now we know that the boost's on. Post boost, exactly the same setting, uh, not exactly the same. Uh, if it's a post boost, it'll just get louder, but it'll stay, it'll keep the same clarity. So, uh. thing is uh, this booster whatever status you've got this set in so whatever the parameter value is and also is it pre or post and also is it on or off all of these settings will be stored when you store your channel so let's quickly make some settings to this channel here so okay let's scoop the mid we'll try and make it sound like really different we'll scoop the mid more push the treble up Bit the bass down, we'll drop, drop the gain back, the volume up a bit. Um, okay, I'm going to leave the, oh, we'll put the boost on, but with the gain back. And let's put on the effects loop as well. I'm not sure what's in there now at the minute. <laughs> I'm going to save that now. I'm just going to press and hold that. That's done. So watch, when I come back to that channel now, 
Bo, it's shit. <laughs> Saved all the settings that I just made, including all of the boost settings and including uh, the effects loop being open over here. I'll turn that back off. I'm going to turn that boost off. We'll pop this back up here a bit. Okay. There we're gone. That'll do for now. The boost knob also holds another hidden feature, which is also really nice. So if I put on a high gain channel like this one. <laughs> If I hold down the boost button for a second, you're going to notice these lights turn yellow. You now have access to the hidden noise gates. Noise gates are great. The noise gates has two noise gates in preamp light. You've got a pre-noise gate, you've got a post-noise gate. Um, pre-noise gate you will use if the thing that's going before your preamp is making noise. Maybe it's a distortion pedal, something like that. You can use that noise gate to get rid of some of the noise. The post noise gate, if you're using a very high gain setting on preamp live, you can use the post noise gate, kill that noise. You'll see this is a very high gain preamp and I've got a fair bit of gain on it. So see when I, when I do this, we actually have a bit of post noise gate here. Same like the boost, if I press this, it tells between pre and post. These will be on at the same time. I don't have any pre noise gate because nothing's making any noise before the preamp. So just to illustrate this, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to turn this noise gate off. And I'm going to turn the gain up. You can hear a bit of fizzy whizzy, right? That's what we're used to with really high gain amps. So what I can do, if I want to get rid of that, I'll just go like this. Just bring this up slowly. There. Our noise is gone. I'm just going to turn that off again. So this is a smart noise gate that one of our algor algorithm engineers spent quite a long time making. So it can get rid of your fizzy whizzy noise, but it don't kill your tone, man, and it don't kill your feel, unless you crank it way too high. But just, just adjust it just to get rid of the noise there. Job done. Okay, guys, that just about wraps it up for the first video in this series on the preamp live. Uh, thanks for tuning in and be sure to check out the next video where we're going to be having a deep look inside the software, uh, how to change the preamps that you have inside your pedal, how to load in IRs and lots of other good stuff. Till then, see you later.